Hi, I'm Catherine, and I'm a senior systems engineer here at AGI. And today we're going to discuss how to use the movie timeline tool, and specifically the movie wizard, to create a high resolution, high quality movie of your SDK scenarios. So in order to use the movie timeline tool, the first thing you want to do is turn on the movie timeline toolbar. So you will right click in your toolbar area and find the movie timeline option. This will create a new toolbar on your window if it's not already open. The next thing I'm going to do is click this record button. It kind of looks like a stop sign. And this will bring up our movie settings wizard. The first thing you want to do is choose the format that you want to have your movie in and where you want it to be saved. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to save my movie here on my desktop and I'm going to give my movie a name that's unique and identifiable for this scenario. Since my scenario is centered around the International Space Station, I will call this my ISS movie version one. And then the next thing you want to do is choose what type of format you want to have for your movie. Do you want to use a Windows Media Player movie? Do you want it to be an uncompressed AVI? If you're going to make this movie and then do some post-processing editing in another video tool, you might want to use this option or any of the individual image op options, your bitmap, your TIFF, and your JPEG, and use those in your movie processing tool to animate and bring that movie to life. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use our Windows Media option. Next, we'll click Next, and it'll ask us which window are we going to make this movie of, your 3D window, your 2D window, whichever movie you want, I will choose my 3D window. The next thing it wants you to do is choose the resolution for your movie. Since my window, my 3D window is full size in my screen right now, it's not going to, it'll show me the width, and that's not one of your standard recording sizes. So I'm going to unmaximize my 3D window and then choose one of our presets, our large preset option, and you can see that SDK has automatically resized your window for that uh, preset size, the large size being a 640 by 480 pixel size. This is important because the codecs that are used to compress the video to make it not a 500 megabyte file relies on your window size being a size divisible by eight. So please ensure that you unmaximize your window and use one of the preset sizes or a size that is divisible by eight when you're using and creating your movie. The next thing that I will choose is a camera path. So do you want the camera of your movie, your movie camera, to follow a particular view? I'm just going to use the current view that I have. And if you would like to learn how to make camera paths and have your camera actually act like Steven Spielberg and move around and zoom in and zoom out as you go through your movie, there'll be another video to cover that in this series. The next thing that you can choose is the time and length of your video. How much time in scenario time do you want this video to cover? And how much and how long do you want the end result video to be? So I am going to choose my video to just be a couple of hours of scenario time. So I'm gonna change this to be the 15th and go to 1800 hours. So two hours of scenario time and then I can see that my movie playback time has changed to be 24 seconds from the 33 hours that it was originally. So I will leave this as a default time, but you will want to tweak this based off of what type of video you're making. How much scenario time do you want to cover? How much end processing time do you want it to have? And then how fast do you want things to unfold in your SDK scenario? I will now click next and then here you get to choose the size and quality of the end result video. So anti-aliasing is a process where SDK looks at the colors of each pixel and the colors of the pixels around it and tries to do some smooth blending to make it a very clean video. This also means that if you have features that are one pixel wide, like the ground track here on my 2D window, that would also be um, muted 
by blending those colors with the other colors around it. For your first cut on videos, we suggest that you don't use anti-aliasing, that you turn it off for faster rendering and so you can make sure that your video is capturing the essence and the emotion that you want it to capture before you spend the additional amount of time it takes to make it a high quality video. The other thing that I will turn off is the quality and I will just change it from our default setting of high to low. Again, changing how much information SDK is recording in that initial video for time sake to make sure that we're getting the information we want covered before we go and make this a very high resolution image. Once I've set these, I can click next and I can preview my video or if I know that I'm ready to record, I can click begin recording. You will see that SDK is going to animate a little bit slower than it does normally because as it animates, it's going to be recording all of that information of what's happening in your 3D window. Additionally, you have a progress bar here on your uh, movie timeline toolbar to show you how far into the process you are of recording this movie. Now that our video has finished recording, we can go take a look at it. So SEK is going to ask you if you would like to play the recorded movie and we can choose yes. And this will automatically open our movie and open it up full screen on our screen to show us the quality of our movie. Now remember, we chose this to be a low quality movie with not a lot of anti-aliasing just to make sure that the video um, captured all of the information that we wanted it to. That's why it looks much more granular than our normal SDK animations. Now that we know that this captures what we're looking for, we can go back to our movie timeline tool, make different choices on the quality of the video we want and make a full, nice, high resolution video. So this is how you use the movie timeline tool to create a movie.